All right, this is going to be one of those talking head videos titled, I sold my dropshipping brand for six figures and now my new brand is at 100,000 a month. So let me just pull this up, kind of hide this. This is today's sales around 7K, 7.3K. And we'll go back 30 days, last 30 days, 152K. So I know a bit about what I'm about to talk about as it pertains to the business of selling product online. Um, and this is really for Anyone that's interested in getting started in e-commerce or maybe you've already started, but you haven't really seen success yet. Um, what I've done in this video or what I'm, what my methodology is, is just reverse engineering the success I've had or the success I've seen other individuals in this space have. And what are like the key qualities? Because I noticed this, I mean, I have a friend who I, who is very successful in this space. And whenever I get to speak to him, it's very apparent why he's a successful individual. Um, and it's the same reasons that I feel like I've succeeded. It's because we look at certain aspects in a, in a specific way. And I'm gonna lay that out in this video. Okay, this, this, this video is not really for someone trying to scale fast to 80,000 a month and then, and then die off or find a trending product. It's not really for anyone as well that's trying to go 500,000 a month or a million a month but barely make any profit. It's neither of those, right? I want to build a business that makes a lot of money at the most optimal level that it takes to run such that my lifestyle in whatever fashion can be achieved. If I want to live and travel and only work maybe three or four hours a day, but I wanna make 30K a month in, in net profit. That's the business I wanna build. I am not the guy to build a 30, $20 million business and work 12, 15 hours a day. I'm just not that guy. I don't wanna be that guy. I got other shit going on in my life that I enjoy doing. But I would like the finance side of my life to be very structured and very enabled. And E-commerce has helped me do that and I want to be able to explain how you can do the same, okay? This is really for someone that's trying to scale past six figures, maybe even seven figures a month, but you wanna have healthy margins and you just wanna produce a cash flow generating business uh, which can be sold, right? And that's one way to look at it is you're not just making 30K a month, you're making down the line maybe 400, 600K in a, in a single sale. and. I spoke about this three videos ago when I, when I literally showed the transaction of me selling my business that I started just a year prior. So because of these parameters, I'm looking to do things the right way from day one, I don't cut corners. So let's just kind of jump into this. I'm gonna assume that capital is a resource that you lack, okay? I'm gonna assume capital is not something that is plentiful for you. Uh, and with that in mind, I have to look at the other skill sets that you can maximize so that your capital allocation is best attributed to the things that matter. And you can gain leverage. What does that mean? That means I'm looking for skills that don't even require capital. Or if they do require capital, they require very little to get out a lot. Okay. And so let's start with some fundamental things. Um, Again, if you're at the stage of starting out or if you're at the stage of, of starting a brand and scaling it a little bit, one point of leverage that I find um, is really important is your belief system, okay? I know this because when I started and I was doing three 5K a day, I was like, wow, I don't think I can go any further than this. And then I met a guy who mentored me and he was doing 160K a day in sales. And um, I think within a couple months, I reached my first 50K day. 
Uh, on my notes to the fact that in, in the beginning, I thought 5K was the max. I thought 10K was the holy grail. So your belief system matters a lot. So let's remove this immediately. Success is literally everywhere. There are people making so much money doing things that you would have never heard of. And there's people making so much money doing things you see every day but you would never think makes a lot of money, okay? Take the trash removal business, for example, such a boring business, you could easily do mid seven figures a year, um, a year. And it's just important to understand that your, under, your knowledge about how far you can scale is probably uh, a limiting belief that you need to remove. Um, and to remove that, you can look at other people who've done bigger numbers than you, or you could be mentored by someone who does, who has a much bigger number than you, or you could just go on YouTube and look at these people doing, you know, a million dollars a month. And, and then maybe that'll be enough of a slap in the face. If you are going, if you've been working hard for a while and you have not seen success, it is most likely the fact that you are paddling really fast, but you're going in the wrong direction, right? Um, and this is something to keep in mind because it will take you a long time to figure out which direction you wanna go in. But once you figure that out, you'll realize the same amount of effort you put in everything else will produce like 10, 20 X outcomes. So focus on where you are going rather than how fast you're going there. In the beginning, of course, you wanna generate a lot of energy, do a lot of things. But once you find out what works, double down. Double down, don't get shiny uh, object syndrome. And then last but not least, please, please learn from your failures. Like take the time to fail. Uh, when you do fail, which you will, take the time to analyze why you failed. Really break it down because that has been the biggest help, helping factor for me is I actually really break down why I'm failing and what went wrong so I can actually learn. Not just, oh, this didn't work, let me move on. Really analyze why it did not work. So that is just the foundational belief system. Let's move into marketing. My opinion is that it's, a be it's better to be a marketer with no biz ops experience rather than a biz ops guy with no marketing experience. Because if you're, if you're good at managing inventory, that doesn't matter if there's no inventory, okay? If inventory is not even moving. So, and I see this a lot with indie hackers on Twitter. So you'll have a lot of independent developers on Twitter building these cool projects and then they never really grow these projects and you wonder why are they not growing? It's because they suck at marketing. They're great at building the product, they suck, they suck at marketing the product, okay? So the ones that do succeed, by the way, are the ones that already have a huge following or they're good at SEO or they're good at paid ads. So again, the marketing is very important. Marketing is a very old skill. So if, you're, if you are to learn marketing, go back, look at the David Ogilvy's, look at the Seth Godin's, look at print advertising, print marketing, and that will start to build your, your Ephesus, Ephesus? of information that you can kind of build up on, right? It's a good starting point. And then um, for me specifically, uh, when I combine that foundational marking by uh, understanding old marketing um, psychology and you know the, the boron letters, things like that, and I combine that with my skill set of meta ads and uh, my experience of meta ads, um, I, I saw success very fast with that combination, right? Because meta ads is just a microphone. so. If you're good at meta ads, learn foundational marketing. If you're good at foundational marketing, learn meta ads or learn how to advertise correctly, how to test interests, how to utilize um, Facebook advertising. And if you don't really have a place to start with, I do have a video about this. So go check that out. Um, lastly, when I was studying marketing a lot, I I wanted to understand the nature and causes of religions and cults because what they do is they're taking someone from maybe no belief system at all to die hard, you know, number one purpose is this religion and cult. And so that is a form of marketing because you are persuading someone into a belief system and into that belief system, then they come bought into whatever you say, whatever you do. And what I, what I came to find out was actually half of it was predicated on the where the individual was before they even heard about the religion or cults, right? And you can read this in different books where they talk about the individual has to be vulnerable. They have to have no support system. 
uh, they have to be a little bit lost in life, right? There are some foundational factors to which makes them quite susceptible to then join a religion and things. So that leads me into my next point. We have the limiting beliefs, the marketing. The third thing is emotion. Emotion is very important in terms of marketing because it allows you to then figure out uh, a big point of leverage that you can have with your products. So a triggering problem, a deep desire, a cult following, okay? A triggering problem, back pain, is a very triggering problem. That's why back pain does really well. A deep desire, confidence, is a very deep desire. That's why makeup does really well, right? A cult following, cult following such as wearing barefoot shoes or connecting to the earth, right? That's why maybe grounding or, or uh, you know, like sustainable products, environmentally friendly products do really well because they have a cult following. Okay, so this this is like a good starting place for which to find brand ideas, product ideas, etc. If we look at sleep, improving sleep gives you better life quality, um, just is an enjoyment of, of actually sleeping better. That's why you see sleeping products do very well. Supplements are a very good one because they have a high perceived value, more focus, more clarity, more energy, better health. Um, there is a lot of emotional gain from taking a supplement or getting better sleep. Pain, pain is a very, very strong emotion. So feet aches are a common problem. Orthopedic slippers therefore do very, very well or anything orthopedic for that matter. Confidence, I saw a individual selling shoes that were, that they're very nice streetwear shoes but they allow you to boost your height by three or four inches, crazy. Um, it's like heels for men but they look good. And so they ended up doing very, very well, featured on a lot of different magazines uh, and fashion shows. And it's because not only do their shoes look good, but they tap into a very dire emotion, which is confidence for men. Men always want to feel more confident. They want to feel like they're in charge, that they're looked at and desired. Same with women. Sex is a big one as well. We want to be attracted to the other sex. That's why uh, certain products um, that make us more attractive are often bought in high demand. Uh, I saw this one shirt brand and they're built for bigger guys uh, who have big guts because all they do is they sell t-shirts where it's tight on the top and the in the sleeve but it's loose in the gut area so it kind of hides your gut and uh, it does really well right it, it makes the the bigger man more attractive looking he feels more confident he's more um, he, he's more desired by the opposite sex and that's why that brand can really tap into that emotion and you see it in their ads and marketing. Nature, right? Sustainability, environmentally friendly, helps the earth, cult following is a good one. Status, any product that makes you feel like higher status. We see this with luxury watches. They all tell the same time. But apart from just being a good investment and as well as just being a collector, they do flex a little. You know, like if you've got a $100,000 watch on your wrist, that's a status thing. You bought that because you wanted to flex. Just be real. Um, and then that's also a sex thing, right? Maybe you want to flex to the opposite sex. Maybe you want to be more attractive to the opposite sex. Guys, when you start studying this, you'll see it in your daily life. Like you'll see it so obviously with your partners, with your, with your significant other, with your family, with your friends. You'll see the things that they do predicated on the emotions that they want to feel or not feel, okay? And then comfort, right? Like a pest remover. A pest removing product gives you comfort because you don't want a pest in your bed, in your house, etc. So my last point here is gonna be uh, e-commerce business knowledge. So e-commerce business knowledge is very important, right? How much does it cost? How much are you selling it for? What's the margin? What's the net profits? Um, how much is the uh, cost per acquisition? What's the ROAS that you need, okay? The reason this is so important is I can identify products that will work or won't work based on the business fundamentals. And you need to understand that from day one. A lot of you are trying to get started by just finding a winning product. It's just not, it, it's, I think those days, you're trying to basically do what was working in 2016 and 2024, okay? And what you'll find is the people that are showing you like these 100K days or, sorry, 100K months or 150K months with the shittiest product, that product, that, that business of theirs will die within two or three months. 
because there was no foundation. And, and like I said at the beginning of this video, it's really, I'm really more interested in building you a cash flow business, not making you 20 grand within three months. That's not what I'm interested in. Um, and so business fundamentals, understanding your uh, cost to actually produce the product, the shipping times, right? What are your competitors doing? How can you make it different? What are reviews about the product? What are people saying? These things really matter. I talk about these all in my earlier videos. So remove your limiting belief, get better at marketing and marketing is both the hard skill of marketing and then the uh, leverage of things like meta ads and creatives. Uh, get better at understanding human emotion and then understand the key foundations of e-commerce business knowledge. Okay, these little little tidbits, although they seem like very high level ideas, if you can grasp them quite well, let's say you go back and you can continuously tell yourself that, oh, you can do 10K, 15K a day, 20K a days, or you start to read books on David Ogilvy or Seth Godin, and then you start to learn more about meta ads. And then thirdly, you start to understand emotions, desires, go deeper into human psychology. All of that, plus your e-commerce business knowledge, I guarantee you, you're going to succeed and you're going to build a business that works very, very well. Uh, because you have the pre-existing knowledge. When I talk to my friends who are successful in the e-commerce space, this is what we talk about. This is what we talk about. We talk about, oh, what are the margins on this, right? What is the CAC on this? What is the contribution margin? What's the LTV, right? How would we market this? Oh, there's an emotion involved. Oh, you can make someone feel more confident. That's what we talk about. We don't talk about, oh, I'm trying to scale this on TikTok ads. Like, we don't just, we just don't talk about that. It's not, it's not where you start. That's later, later down the line when you're when you're just trying to continue what you've already achieved, which is a bunch of success in, in, in the brand that you've created. So I hope this video helped. It was just a talking head video. I wanted to give out some information. And um, yeah, uh, wish you guys all the best. Talk to you soon. Thank you.